Can big blocks scale? And if they can, would it centralize the network? First, let's take a look if it's even possible. Bitcoin currently only allows for a few transactions per second. It has one megabyte blocks about every 10 minutes. This equals to 144 blocks per day and 50 gigabytes per year of storage. This size has caused massive congestion in the network, raising confirmation times to hours or days, and the average transaction fee is $57 as of today, at the end of 2017. An 8-terabyte hard drive currently costs only about $150, which could contain the next 160 years worth of the current blockchain. In order for Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash to raise to the level of Visa, it would require a little less than 2,000 transactions per second. Without SegWit, this would require 300 megabyte blocks, equaling to less than 16 terabytes per year, or two of our $150 hard drives. All our transactions would be less than a penny, and without replace by fee, this allows for instant zero confirmation on small to medium purchases at worldwide adoption level. It's really that simple. The argument is that the cost of storage and bandwidth would cause some users not to be able to afford to run nodes and consolidate them to miners only. Let's explore this. Big blocks change the requirements of two resources, storage and bandwidth. Storage is easy. 16 terabytes per year of storage would only be needed at the height of adoption. This would take time. Even today, $300 a year would be affordable enough for most to run. After all, that's only five transaction fees worth of Bitcoin. But storage gets cheaper over time due to Moore's Law. Let's look at prices per gigabyte over the past 50 years. In 1967, it was $1 million per gigabyte. 1980, 200000 1990, 7000 1997, 20 years ago, $450. 2000, $15. 2005, 64 cents. 2010, 10 cents. 2015, 5 cents. 2017, 2 cents per gigabyte. Technological innovation does not stop. By the time 300 megabyte blocks are acquired, this will be a non issue more than it already is. So what about bandwidth? Bandwidth is an issue in many developing countries, but internet connectivity is also affected heavily by innovation and is spreading at a rapid rate around the world. Today, if a Buki Adbani from Nigeria is already having problems with bandwidth, it's likely that his slow connection to his node is hurting the network and slowing relayed transactions from reaching full nodes to be propagated into blocks. Which brings us to the question... Why does he need to run a node anyways? You often hear that nodes validate transactions, keep the network secure, keep miners from changing the protocol to their benefits, or are the integrated voting mechanism of Bitcoin. But this is only true for full nodes, that is, a node that has hash power behind it. Let's imagine a busy airport next to a hotel. The hotel is where the transactions begin, and the airport is the next blocks, where the transactions need to end up. Transactions need to be taken by the nodes and placed in a block. Transactions are the people, and the vehicles are nodes. The gas to run the vehicles is the hash power. Joe comes out of the hotel and needs to be taken to the airport. So he steps into the first taxi he sees, only to find the taxi can't move. It has no gas. So Joe steps out to try the next vehicle, and repeats this until he finds a vehicle that is able to take him to the airport. This is how your node relays transactions. It's not relaying them towards the destination, but randomly passing it to another node in hopes that it has hash power behind it. The only node capable being a full mining node, but the relay was never needed. Joe could have stepped straight out of the airport and into the proper vehicle, without the trouble of hopping from one to another. If your vehicle spots something on the road, it can do nothing about it. You can't drive to alert anyone or change anything. You are stuck dead in your tracks with an empty tank. Saying everyone in the world should have a car is meaningless if you do not have the gas to power it. Your node isn't performing its function. 
This is where the confusion is, because in the Bitcoin white paper, nodes all have hash power behind them. It wasn't until later that the mining function became optional, and your node could be read-only, to be used as a wallet. This was before SPV wallets were available. People think that their nodes are helping to secure the network, but they're not. Like the taxi, they are just sitting there waiting. Without the hash power, your node acts like it was never there. Any validation, rejection, or confirmations it might make have no impact on what the miners or the pools do. It only receives the block information after the true full nodes have done their job. If your node rejects a block receiving from the mining node, it is just forking itself off the network. It doesn't fix anything. Bitcoin is a proof-of-work system. If you do no work, there is no proof, and you get no power. If non-mining nodes had the power that people believed, someone would easily whip up 10,000 nodes on cloud servers to perform a cyber attack. This doesn't happen because without the hash power, the nodes have no influence. This is not a design flaw. This is a great strength. Non-mining nodes do serve a purpose, but it's the purpose not for the network, but for the operator of the node. It allows you to have a copy of the ledger that is already validated by real full nodes. It allows you to independently verify zero confirmation instant transactions. If there was a situation where the miners colluded into a 51% attack or double spend, it would allow you to see it. But you still couldn't do anything about it. This makes it useful for businesses accepting Bitcoin to run these nodes, not users. As Satoshi said, users should use SPV wallets. Have you ever heard anyone talk about the lack of security and reliability of SPV cold wallets like Trezors or Ledgers? No, they are above secure. The issue is not that nodes could potentially be consolidated. The issue is the lie that regular users should have to run nodes. Let's look at some of the quotes from Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin himself. The current system where every user is a network node is not the intended configuration for a large scale. That would be like every Usernet user runs their own NNTP server. The design supports letting users just be users. The more burden it is to run a node, the fewer nodes there will be. Those few nodes will be big server farms. The rest will be client nodes that only do transactions and don't generate. At first, most users would run network nodes, but as the network grows beyond a certain point, it would be left more and more specialist with server farms of specialized hardware. A server farm would only need to have one node on the network, and the rest of the local area network connects to that one node. Only people trying to create new coins would need to run network nodes. People have been fed a lie that running these worthless nodes somehow does something good for the network. But why? One reason is that it gives the illusion of decentralization while contributing to the process of centralization via second layers. People are fighting tooth and nail to contribute to this system because they believe it's the right thing to do. Secondly, with the introduction of SegWit, relay nodes are needed to relay the segregated signatures from the transactions. Core has created the need for a party that has no financial incentive to do so. By fooling you, you keep their broken system running. Bitcoin is supposed to be a system regulated by incentives, but now relies on trickery and lies. Worthless wallet nodes were never supposed to and not required to be a distributed part of the system. And I understand the sentiment. Just as I wish I could be a miner, we all want to be part of the system. But don't let sentiment blind you to be a burden. On-chain scaling is the long-term, simple, affordable solution and could be implemented today. It was planned from the very beginning, but the protocol was purposely blocked and destroyed in order to place financial institutions as required middlemen for the new system to run. Feel free to disagree with me, but first read the white paper. It's obvious that this was foreseen and never a problem in the first place. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Tell me how your node is going to keep anything in check. How is it going to enforce anything? How can it stop the evil miners from doing anything? You've been lied to, so you can relay segregated signatures for free to allow the banks to be middlemen. Welcome to the harsh, cold reality of greed and power.